partly because he was dyslexic, but always as a kid, I love Bob Weir was such a badass in the, he's playing to all these hippies, like in the like late eighties, he's wearing cut off jean shorts. He put up cut off jean shorts and a Madonna t-shirt and a pink guitar like that. That's so there's all the like crusty deadheads. Yeah. And that's, that's, uh, how Bob, Bobby just does his own thing, man. He's such a, an original, original dude. God. Yeah, I, I, uh, God, I love Bob Weir. Pull up top ten Grateful Dead songs, and let's let's us go through and rank them. Okay, it's interesting because I would say I'm a casual dead deadhead. Yeah, but I listen to it way more than like it's one of my go to. I have you- three go tos. It's it's Wilco. I'm meaning like uh tomorrow tomorrow morning. Yeah, uh, I will go on to because it's my birthday. I'll go on to sonos yeah and i'll put in some music and my go-to's are the dead uh wilco and and widespread panic oh cool those are my three go-to's uh every now and then the doors i'll throw in like the doors but they don't really deliver the way like because you would love philco which was when phil lash of the dead played with wilco this summer they played a bunch of shows are you serious yeah so i'm sure there's bootleg recordings on um online so they played some wilco tunes and some uh dead tunes well i gotta be honest with you i feel like i feel like the top 10 dead songs are a i'm gonna say this i hope this doesn't sound disrespectful just a tad bit pedestrian for like i think their songs everyone knows now i'm sure my wife wouldn't know any of them yeah hit 42 more Okay, Fire on the Mountain. Yeah, like that. See, there's where I start. St. Stephen. Yeah, the. I mean... I broke down, broke down... I didn't realize Broke Down Palace was the name of that movie that Claire Danes was in, and it was based on that song. I didn't know it was based on that song, but that song just... Oh, my God. It's, it's hard fucking, to keep tears in your tear ducts with that tune. Estimated Profit. I mean, I love all these tunes. I know what you mean. Like, certain songs, like, say, Trucking or... Like um, like when you go to the top, standing on the moon. Okay, dude, standing on the moon. China Cat Sunflower is one of my favorite songs. Standing on the moon is the greatest love song. I'll send you the right version, and just Jerry's soul. You 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 can feel it. Any oh my god, standing on the moon is an absolute fave. Um, I love Ripple. I'm not, I don't mean to discount count Ripple. I love Ripple. No, but. Ripple's beautiful. I mean, I I yeah. I love I Sugar love, Magnolia is a beautiful song. Sugar Magnolia is a beautiful tune. Uh, I I mean, I love every like Touch of Grey was their only big hit. Touch and I'm of, like, you listen to Touch of Grey, like this is such a great tune, man. Yeah, I and love Touch live. Of Grey. They would that live they could jam it out a little bit. I, I feel like I feel like I feel like I've earned everything I've ever worked for. When I drive in my Mercedes listening to Touch of Grey. Oh, totally. I feel like yeah. that's the vibe I've been good looking for my whole life. Yeah. My whole fucking it's life. such an optimistic tune. It's such an optimistic tune. In the uh in the eighties, they asked Jerry what like modern music he liked. And you'd think he would say like some like crazy band, or whatever. He goes, uh, don't worry, be happy. He goes, I really like, I really like what that song's saying. <laughs> he 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 was an optimistic dude, man. He said he apted for in this lifetime. He apted for fun, a lifetime of fun. He man, but shake to me, Shakedown Street should be your tune. Yeah, I see you busting a move to Shakedown Street. Um, it's funny. I I got there were like three dead albums that I played on repeat in my truck, and they all remind me of Doke Campbell Stadium at Florida State because that's where I worked every night. And so that's what I'd listen to is that we had we had uh, space in in Doe Campbell that we would work out of. But you kind of had the whole stadium to yourself. OK, no one was there and we had no music. So I just back my truck into the stadium and then open the doors and, you know, clean your truck, listen to music, smoke a cigarette. Yeah. Like and just wait for the phone to ring. That's all we did was answer phone calls. But uh, and that's when I turned the corner with the dead where I was like. Oh, I'm starting to get all of it. Yeah. Like, I'm starting to play an album from beginning to end and get all of it. Yeah. There's, there's no better feeling when you get all of a band. Yeah, absolutely. And there's just so... I mean, they played over 2,000 shows. And that's what... I mean, I wouldn't listen to an album, but I would listen to, like, a live show. So I'd have, like, my favorite performance of 
a certain tune. And yeah. when I started writing, so I modeled, moved to Vancouver. Before I started stand up, I was working for a company that made uh, kids movies. As a dyslexic, I couldn't type. I would write down scenes on legal pads and send them to, there was the, you know, Air Buddies, you know, Air Bud, yeah. the dog that thing. Yeah, yeah. So he had puppies and yeah. then they brought me in to, so if you watch the first Air Buddies, if you watch the first Air Buddies, there's so many dead references in that movie <laughs> because I was just listening to shows and I would sit, I have this encyclopedia of all uh, dead shows and I would just like put on a show. I put on like, uh, you know, a show from 78 and I would go through the encyclopedia and then Deadhead's a red review. So they talk about each tune. So it was like my college kind of as I'm writing dialogue for puppies. So wait, what's the best dead show you, you think in your opinion? I mean, my favorite shows they, they played and this would mean something to you. They played, a sh uh, I love, and it's because of how I was really high on LSD when I first heard it and it blew my fucking mind was uh 78 uh red rocks oh and the dude the the uh the uh eyes of the world solo jerry's just fucking it's wild but then they played they had like different eras where they were great they were i mean they were great all along but then uh in 89 they these two shows and they came out on cd they're amazing it, they're called uh formerly the warlocks and they played these two shows in virginia beach uh in october of 89 and both those shows are are like you get goosebumps the whole time but yeah this this is a great this is i love this show and then anything spring 77 is like kind of they're like considered to be their best um kind of period really spring 77 yeah it's so, interesting they're a band that started in the 60s lasted 65 through the, lasted through the 70s first hit 87 you want to talk about peaking late. That was yeah. the first time they started selling records. And then, and then he died in what? 90, 95. 95. He died in 95. Yeah. It's crazy. He was Mexican. Uh, yeah. He was part Mexican. Yeah. Like that's insane. Uh, this is the connection I have with my mom. When he died, I phoned my mom. And before I could even say anything, she just said, I know dear. Cause she knew how fuck. And I was so fucked up when he passed. What, what do you, you think? What do you, what, like, what do you think, why the dead? Like, I'm trying to think, is it, what, what, do you love them because of where you were at when you were introduced to them? Or is it something that they do that, like, relaxes you? It, like, I think it's like a perfect storm. And I think that it, it's such a rich, for one, I got to observe them from such a different place because there's not, in Canada, it's not the way, like in the States, I'm sure in every single uh, school picture when we were in school, there was a kid with a tie-dyed shirt and, you know, someone's high school quote was, it's a long, strange trip. Like, yeah. there was deadheads everywhere. Yeah. And there was deadheads that were frat boys and there were deadheads that were, you know, like hippies and all the stuff. There was, you know, there was like an on-call that was a deadhead. In Canada, I didn't know that much about them. So I got to just, without kind of all the baggage that they come with. And then just the way they started, they were just a band and then they they uh, got hired to do uh, the acid test. So they were just taking tons of LSD and just figuring it out. The same way a comic would just go up and just dick around, dick around, dick around. And all of a sudden they became, you know, something. So they started 65. And then there was all these great bands at that time. And they just kept going. Yeah. And people would pass and they kept going. That and I think Garcia was like just, you know, just a really, really like one in a lifetime gifted musician. I think he really genuinely was.